Got to really figure out why it takes so long to get off the one on my camera. Oh well. Aaron Simpson versus Mike Pierce. This is obviously my Brown Bigfoot prediction video. Um, Aaron Simpson and Mike Pierce uh, taking Pierce, two D Division One wrestlers. I think Pierce brings more proven cardio at one seventy, uh, more proven toughness, an ability to generally make other wrestlers look pretty bad. See the fight with Josh Koscheck, which I thought he won. See the fight with Johnny Hendricks, which I thought he won. Um, yeah, um, it won't be a it won't be a tremendously great fight if you're one of these people who blew the ground game. It's not a fight for you. Uh, Pierce, though, very good about getting off his back. Aaron Simpson started kind of slowly against Kenny Robertson, although ironically came on later on. But um, I just think that at 170, he doesn't seem comfortable enough to beat Mike Pierce. Uh, Carlo Prater, Marcus Levisor. Carlo Prater, please, 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 please beat him. Uh, Levisor, despite the fact that he actually has a lot of stoppages on his record, which is, of course, a bit weird, his only real wins... Of any remote note are over a pair of ex tougher's Brian Garrity and Dane Sayers. Lost to Cody McKenzie in the UFC. Lost to Brian Cobb, Dakota Cochran outside the UFC, and a number of even the less impressive guys. Um, he's a tremendous wrestler, but he doesn't seem to have particularly any other skills. The unfortunate thing is Prater off his back, where he probably will end up, isn't great. But I still think he can get this done, and I'm really hoping he can get this done. Carlo Prater, uh, second or third round submission, hopefully will occur. So we don't have to see the Visser again. Uh, Darren, BC, Yoyama versus Phil Harris. Not tremendously familiar with Phil Harris. I have seen him fight. His record is splotchy. Kind of a Vaughn Lee-esque record. Um, you know, Notable guys, including Paul McVie, Drills at Jose Aldo. Uh, Ainsley Grimshaw. That is a really chick sounding name. Whatever. Um, he's debuting without particularly enough of an ability to beat a bigger, stronger, a definitely better grappler in Darren B.C. Uyama, who. Didn't find it all that hard to get Kid Yamamoto out of there. So, yeah, I gotta go with him. submission second round for BC. Bart Palaszewski, Diego Nunes. For Diego Nunez. Uh, taking Diego Nunez by unanimous decision here. Uh, mostly because, you know, finishing Bart Palaszewski is a tall order. His uh, greatest weakness is not something that Nunes really would capitalize on, which is his lack of sprawl, lack of ability to stop takedowns. But, um,. At 145, I just think the speed difference will get him. Mind you, I thought that was the same thing about Kenny Florian versus David Nunes, and that didn't happen, so we'll see. Um, but Bart Palaszewski, we don't really know how the cardio is at 145. We don't really know how the speed matches up. Definitely has the power to possibly put Nunes out of there, but so did Dan Seaver, and he couldn't get it done either. So, yeah, I got Nunes. Unanimous decision on what should be actually a pretty good fight. Jacob Volkman, Shane Roller, pretty much given my pick on this. Volkman decision. Tavares decision over Dennis Hallman. Michael Johnson decision over Danny Castillo. These are all rescheduled fights. Uh, Jeremy Stevens versus Eve Edwards. Eve Edwards at this point, his chin is just too questionable for me to really ride him against a power puncher like Jeremy Stevens. So I got Jeremy Stevens TKO, TKO second round. Um, just clipping him. Edwards has still got speed. He's still got technique. Um, the age isn't showing outside of the chin. So he'll make a good run of it up until then, but just not the kind of fight that he's going to win at this point in his career. On to the main card, John Dodson for Hussier Da Silva. Hussier Formiga Da Silva. Um, we go back and forth on this. On one hand, I want to think Dodson's got this because at 135, he showed great takedown defense, he showed great speed, and that should translate down, particularly takedown defense. Problem is, he looked like dog crap for a good chunk of the Tim Elliott fight. And it makes me think that 125 is not where he belongs. 
As a result, I'm going to take Formiga by unanimous decision. But if Dotson comes out there and looks good, like the cardio's in shape, the wrestling's there, the transition to 125 has actually happened, he'll win this fight. But he hasn't shown me enough to make me pick him. Josh Near, Justin Edwards don't care. Um, Josh Near, unanimous decision, winning rounds two and three after a slow start. Edwards is a front runner. Near has weak wrestling defense. He annoys me. Moving on. Jay Kellenberger, Jay Haran. Been going back and forth in this one, of course, as people. I've broken this fight down before, but just a quick little <laughs> recap. Uh, Jay Haran has beaten Ellenberger before. And Ellenberger's wrestling is still somewhat of a question mark, defensively speaking. Sanchez got him down. We saw him have some problems with Hoka. That being said, I got him winning this fight. Jay Haran has seemingly cracked on the big stage of the UFC before. Not as much, not the GSP fight or the Goulet fight, really. I mean, those are two losses, and you might say, oh, we lost to Jonathan Goulet. He's useless. He bleeding like a stuck pig almost the whole time. And Jonathan Goulet even said, I don't know how this fight was never stopped. It, it was everywhere. Um, if you remember that fight, you'll remember the blood. Uh, but I got to take the Ellenberger. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he stopped Haran, but I'm thinking decision. Um, I'm thinking that maybe he puts Haran on his back a couple times to get away from that. Uses the superior power on the feet, although not necessarily the superior stand-up, to win that element. And takes this by decision. But is his cardio and his takedown defense are really going to have to hold up. And I don't know if they will, but we'll see. Travis Brown, Bigfoot Silva. Interesting matchup. Even though Bigfoot's on a bit of a slide right now, you know, hasn't won since the Fedor fight, which of course makes Fedor look terrible, which is not good for those of us who are a fan of him in the day. Daniel Cormier, Cain Velasquez, gave him a beatdown. But before that, he had beaten Fedor, he beat Mike Cobb, beat Marlowski. He did get rocked by Mike Cobb, which is a problem. He looked good against Mauricio Verdun for a bit. Beating Jim York, beat Justin Eilers, uh, Yoshihara Nakao, Rico Rodriguez, Jonathan Wuzora, Cabbage Carrera. We're back in 2007 by this point, so there's no real point in going much further. He's a massive guy with a lot of talent, but that chin seems to be letting him down, and he's not tremendously fast. Um, Travis Brown's a guy who has similar level of size, um, has better speed, I think, has the power to put him away, and, and will. Uh, I got Travis Brown by first round or second round TKO KO. Don't count Bigfoot out. Um, if he can figure out a way to get Brown down and control him, I think the grappling game could serve him very well. Um, but we'll see. Um, I'm just not. I've gotten very uncomfortable picking Bigfoot to win fights these days. That's the predictions. Uh, enjoy it.